Good morning. <clears throat> Today we're talking about how to quieten the mind. How to quieten the mind. And it's a pretty important knowledge to have because insofar as we suffer, there are people who do suffer more than you and there are people who suffer less than you. But insofar as you suffer, your suffering really only comes through one portal and that is your thinking. So we have to get a new relationship with this. We have to see it in a new way perhaps. And how do we see it? We tend to think that we are the thinker. And this is why we are so obsessed with our thinking. This is why we'll drop everything to have a think. This is why we'll sacrifice whatever is beyond thinking, because we are so convinced that we are the thinker. So how do we really sort this out? There is basically two ways, or two, there's the long term and then there's the short term. So in the short term, you know, you might find yourself just thinking way too much and want to quieten your mind. And we'll look at that in the second section of the talk. In the first talk, the far part of the talk, we have to see that this is a commitment we need to make. This is a choice we need to make for our lives to go beyond the mind and to pursue with earnestness as a matter of great import what the truth about the self actually is. And over time you will find that if you do this, if you inquire into the nature of the self, you will find that your relationship with your thinking changes and it becomes quieter and quieter. Now there are some practices that are incredibly helpful in this, or at least I'm, I'm always speaking from my own experience. So you know, if it doesn't coincide with yours or what you've read or somebody something said, whatever. But I'm speaking from my experience and what I did was, uh, I did a lot of meditation for decades that didn't do much at all in terms of quietening my mind. It didn't really make any difference whatsoever. And then I started doing Vipassana meditation, retreats, 10-day retreats, Goenka retreats. And these made a huge difference because it showed me that there's some kind of mechanism where whatever my senses fall upon, I've got to start thinking about it or it triggers something not about what I'm looking at, but what I'm looking at triggers some thought. And uh, by sitting so still for so long, I got to see actually what was happening. And I got to see for myself and was able to confirm more and more and more that I'm not the thinker, that the thoughts arise spontaneously of their own accord given by who I'm being <coughs> in any one moment. <coughs> so if I'm being angry, I'm going to have spontaneously arising angry thoughts. If I'm being unconscious, not really awake, I'll just find my unconsciousness taking over the moment and rabbiting on to me uh, about whatever. If I'm being clear, then I'll have clear thoughts spontaneously arising. So the passion of meditation made a long, uh, made a lasting difference to me. Uh, you know, when you do a 10 day meditation like that, you, you might think, oh, you know, um, how could I do that? And I did think that, even though I'd been meditating quite a lot before, I thought, well, how could I do 10 days, 10 hours a day? That'd be impossible. But actually people come to those uh, who've never done any meditation and they get on with it fine. So the passion for some people, very, very helpful in really shifting once and for all the relationship to the thinking, to the mental part of our being. 
So there has to be a commitment over time to grow, to pursue the truth, to have that as a, as a really a top priority. Because if you get that right, then everything else finds its, its place. But if you don't get that right, you're looking for what self-knowledge would have given you where it can't be found, perhaps in relationships or perhaps in acquiring possessions or power or fame or whatever. But when we get these things, we're, we're disappointed. Oh, 10 million didn't do it. Maybe it's 15 that I need to get. So there has to be a commitment there. You know what? I want to know the truth about this life its purpose and who I am and really choose that and when you do really choose that the choice actually reconfigures your life so that it starts to be about what you've chosen which is self-realization and you do that earnestly and you will make progress you will make progress every time you engage in an authentic practice and that's one of the ways of, of uh, judging if you like an authentic practice or or an authentic teacher is that every time you contact with it there is progress made there's a definite sense of yes I'm going somewhere I'm getting something I'm getting something that's valuable. So, a daily practice, whether it's an official sort of practice coming out of religion like Vipassana, which has lasted 2,500 years and works incredibly well, or whether it's just a practice which engage, has you sitting in presence, the thing that tells you a lot of times people think oh no i can't do that you know my mind's too strong I, I can't concentrate i'm always thinking but the thing that tells you how well you're doing your meditation doesn't know anything about meditation and is not uh is not someone who you want to really listen to it doesn't know about it it's out of the mental realm and what about doing something that you can't do badly and you can't do well it just is what it is so what we're really saying in the long term to quieten your mind a commitment to self-realization and an openness to what life will then offer you as your path and then once you have that path to give it your best shot every day and you will find pretty soon that you're feeling the benefit of that that it actually this time spent sitting still sitting in presence parking your body turning within that this time spent doing that is actually very valuable so that's the long term to quiet your mind a long term lifetime commitment to self-realization and you will find that the results are there the other thing is to look at is when your mind is loud in any one moment what can you do to quieten it how do you actually tame the mind how do you how do you stop it how do you stop these torrential thoughts sometimes it's very loud well the way that it works from my perception is this you can't really have your attention in more than one place at one time you're either listening to your thoughts or you're attending to something else so when your thinking has hijacked your attention and you're just rabbiting on to yourself as soon as you become aware that that isn't what you want to do then you place your attention elsewhere so you own your attention you take it back from being hijacked and recognize that your attention 
you can choose actually where you put it you don't have to give it to your mind so that you become conscious of whatever it is you're thinking you can pull it out of there and how do you do that well, pretty much anything that you attend to will break and start to diminish the intense flow of thinking when you're in one of those spaces so even if it's just like looking at a point on a wall without blinking that's you taking back your attention that's you choosing what's going to be going on with your mind and then even if the mind kind of has a residue of a momentum continuing when you've chosen to focus you now can kind of see it and you're separate from it and you're observing it as soon as you observe it it quietens down you ask yourself who's listening to this thinking who's listening how do I know I'm thinking because something is listening to it something is witnessing it and as soon as you do that and stay with that witness it's not just an understanding but get what the witness is you wouldn't you're hearing it like you're hearing my voice you're hearing your thoughts and when you identify then as the witness the dynamic changes and your mind becomes quieter and quieter you can't be the witness and have uh, a raging internal conversation at the same time so focus brings the sense of the witness as you put your attention and relax into witnessing the mind quietens and quietens and quietens and in fact it won't just quieten if you really attend to the witness it'll become completely quiet and then beyond com completely quiet there is this incredible silence it's <coughs> excuse me it is actually different so there's a quietness of mind because you've perceiving the witness and it becomes still and it becomes quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter but then as you follow your thoughts back to their origin which is actually your heart or you follow your breath back to where it comes from which is again your heart and you bring your consciousness in as much as you can to the heart the most incredible silence is there a silence so profound that you would call it sacred a sacred silence not just a like a stillness but a sacred silence where the sacredness of life is the scent that comes from that silence and gradually you your your mind will become complete well it will become completely quiet for longer and longer periods and then your identification with the psychological self from where the thoughts come and what they're about it it's you're not interested anymore because you have found something more incredible more fascinating that yields a higher sense of realization than your thoughts you still think you can still think whenever you want of course you can but it's something more profound is there the witness and the ability to bring your consciousness in alignment with awareness now if, if it's like even that's too much or you don't get that one thing you can do when you're having a kind of mind storm and it's just you know too much thinking maybe something you know you've had too much coffee or something stimulating and you've had an emotional upset of some kind those two things together can really get the old mind racing even more kind of basic than that is simply that when you find yourself in that position 
even chanting something, you know, a mantra, uh, either in English or in some other language. And that, again, has you owning the capacity to verbalize internally and to think, rather than have your unconscious rabbiting on, rabbiting on, out of control, causing you misery, you just chant something. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. And these mantras, these ancient mantras, carry with them an incredible vibration. Apart from the fact that they just absorb your mind in a direction you want to take it, they actually have a, a, a beautiful vibration in themselves. So, the, when to quieten the mind, you have to realize that you're not the thinker, that you're the one observing it. There's two things we can do with our minds. One is that we can think. We can think from an unconscious place, or we can think consciously. And the other thing we can do with our mind is to focus our attention. And what you focus on reveals itself. So when the thinking aspect of the mind is too loud, then you need to turn up the focusing aspect. And it's incredible because to, when you start to focus and to concentrate, you think, okay, I'm going to look at that, um, uh, that mark on the wall and I'm not going to blink. I'm just going to focus. And you find that within a few seconds, your attention has drifted and you find yourself back in your mind again. But the incredible thing is that if you really persist, you'll reach the next stage of concentration, which is where you can find a spot on the wall or whatever it is, is the object of your focus, and literally just rest your attention there and leave it there. And so you have come into a state of relaxed concentration. It's kind of effortless. There is an effort and there is an intention, but it's not like a big effort. It's not a stress. It's li literally resting and concentrating. And this then increases your consciousness so that you're just not there to be hijacked by your mind. You're too awake. Because as soon as you concentrate, you start to wake up. You can only really be hijacked by your mind when you're kind of asleep, a little bit of sleep. So one, another way of really getting away from the noisy mind is just to wake up a little, to actually see what's going on. And concentration, paying attention to something will do that. And beyond there are, there are several stages beyond being able to concentrate on something and keep your attention with it. But this is kind of like a training. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And this is why, as I said in the beginning, it's really important to have a commitment because there is, there is something you can do, there is something you can develop. You can develop your concentration by using it. It's like a muscle, like anything. Anything you keep practicing, you get good at. And a daily practice, you'll find, has tremendous benefits. You might think, oh, I'm not really very clever. Actually, I'm a bit stupid. And if, like me, you feel that about yourself, it won't discount you from being able to concentrate. Your intellect, how it's developed, how clever you are, how intellectual you are, 
isn't a relevant factor when it comes to concentrating. Someone with a high level of intellectual ability will still be hounded by his mind, just as someone who's not, who's got a lower level of IQ will be hounded by, hounded by his mind. So it's not like clever people don't get a problem with their mind. When you're constantly using your mind or having it use you either way, it builds up a momentum. So at the end of the day, you stop doing what you were doing and your mind is still going at full speed. So that's why it's important to understand how it works. So if you, the simple principle is, if your mind is too loud, you need to turn up your focus pretty much on anything. So your mind is loud, it's got a momentum, it's chundering along you, getting really bored of the feelings that are coming from thinking this way. And so you think, okay, I'm the listener to this. And focus and realize that you're the one perceiving it. And you take your attention out of what you're perceiving and put it into the perceiver. You take it out of the object, your thoughts, and put it within. To the who, who is who is perceiving this? What is the witness to all this? And you'll find that the, when you distinguish the listener, the object, the thought, the thinker becomes quieter and quieter and quieter. And that quietness goes a long way. Starts off as just kind of relatively peaceful, and more and more peaceful and profoundly peaceful, and it goes all the way, all the way to a to a peace, like it says in the Bible, that passes all understanding. It's just incredible. And at that place, there's not you looking at the peace. There's not you observing a peaceful state of mind. You are that peace. And in that place, no thought arises. So, to start with, you just notice that how beautiful it is when you pay attention and relax and pay attention to your breath one of the ways of developing your attention and coming into sort of mild states of absorption absorption means that your mind is held that your 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 attention is held that you can't it's much more difficult to go off into your mind because you become absorbed. And there are techniques for that, like breathing, being with your breath. Can, you know, as it comes, just, just, the trick is this. You will notice that when you, someone says to you, observe your breathing, you'll notice that what happens is you then immediately actually don't observe it. You start doing it, pulling it in and pushing it out. And the goal here with the breath is to reach a place where you can just witness it doing it, whatever it does. So you're not pulling in, you're not pulling out, you're not interfering with the breath at all. You're just present to it and watching it. And that will bring you into a, an intense absorption. Just that. Very, very simple. So you, but it's simple technique but actually not looking at your breath and not interfering that's that's not so easy but it's a, it's something you can do and you'll find that as you just watch your breath and don't pull it in or push it out or do anything with it just watch it you will become very quiet and very quiet and there's a kind of quietness that comes that isn't just within you, it's the whole atmosphere goes quiet. Sometimes you can even come into a room where people have been in that incredible quietness. And even though they've left, there's still the presence of silence. There's still the presence of peace. So daily is the key. Keep going with it, keep going with it. Let your commitment and your choice to find and become peaceful 
inform your action every day rather than how you measure the result because the one measuring the result can't be trusted it always works it's always good for you so let's see if there's anything here there's an amazing moment in your on your journey which if you haven't had it yet is coming where you clearly see that you are the one observing your thoughts that you're not the thinker first of all people say it and it sounds yeah maybe maybe not I really think I actually am the thinker because no one else is thinking and the thoughts are arising so it doesn't kind of make sense but then something happens maybe you for me it happened I got incredibly angry for no good reason and I suddenly caught myself I thought wow look I really am this is actually arising in me I'm witnessing it and that made a big difference and you'll see that that you are actually prior to your thinking the witness the super sense I am that one doesn't think. The witness has no thoughts. The witness really doesn't care about what you think. Your high, you know, inspiring thoughts, it doesn't care. Your low, destructive thoughts, it doesn't care. In fact, the witness doesn't care about anything that you do. If it witnesses you being carried away by your mind it doesn't shame you or blame you or have any reaction if it sees you going into a beautiful place within it doesn't congratulate you or whatever it just witnesses and that's the place to be meditation is rela a place of relaxed concentration once you start owning this power once you recognize that your mind has these two capacities, one is to think, to remember, to imagine, to, to internally dialogue in words, and then the other function is to attend, is to pay attention, is to focus. You have attention. Your attention can be developed like a microscope, times five, times ten, times a hundred, times a thousand. And each time you go to the next level of concentration, your perception of life transforms. Most of the time your focus isn't more than 10 seconds or less. So your life has been made up of millions and millions of 10 second segments. And then the, and the, and the trick is to expand the amount of time you're in unbroken focus because that's how you see what is you don't see what is by commentary you see what is by allowing it to be so I hope this has been helpful and that uh, your access to this piece is enhanced in some way it can come quickly it comes from a choice a choice to be free a choice to be happy a choice to be at peace you can do this <laughs>